So I have to get accustomed to calling this plant by Desmodorchus retrospeciens, and I had known this plant as a Caraluma, which I think rolls off the tongue a lot better. <laughs> but of course, botanists and taxonomists are always changing plants, and this is a plant that has changed genus a number of different times. I do have to say that this is actually in the same family as Hoya and also Serapegia. So it actually grows a really beautiful, I wish it was in bloom right now, dark purple, almost like slightly iridescent, dark purple black kind of flower at the tips here. And retrospeciens actually retro, if something's like retrofractus, retrospeciens, typically means that it's twisted. So you could see that the body, the stem here is actually quite twisted. And that is how this plant grows. Its common name is known as King of Stapeliads. So yes, it's in that whole family of Stapeliads, which is also in the same um, group and grouping as Hoya. Um, what else can I say about this plant? It is super prone to freezing temperatures. So oftentimes I'll have like some of my succulents in my window next to my drafty window, window in the winter and some of them fare better than others. I will tell you that this one will not fare next to a really drafty window. So if it's in the winter time, you need to move it away or else it'll kind of look a little bit. Let's see if I could find a little bit of browning right here. Can you see that browning? Yeah, you don't want anything like that happening at too much of a level um, for this plant. So make sure that it's in a relatively warm temperature. It shouldn't drop anything below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equivalent to about 10 degrees Celsius. Um, and you wanna protect it a little bit from light. You don't wanna give it full sun or direct light. Maybe a little bit more kind of indirect bright light is going to be great. I do have this pulled away and a little bit slightly down from my southwest facing window. So if I put it up in my windowsill, then it would be getting definitely some of that high intensity light and you don't want to kind of destroy um, the plant by doing that. Just give it a little bit of protection. Even if you have, I would say like a little bit more of like a chiffon shade, or if you have a plant in front of it that might be giving it a little bit more dapple light, that's going to be great for this. As far as fertilizing goes, it's not a heavy eater. I think that whole family is not really like a heavy eater of fertilizers. So you could probably get away with doing something on a quarterly basis and giving it a succulent fertilizer like a 011 or a 247 or something of that nature. And as far as propagation goes, it'll be by seed or you could actually take cuttings of this plant, but you'd have to let the cuttings actually callus over. Um, this plant, I didn't say this, but it is native to parts of Africa, also throughout Saudi Arabia. It's in many different types of um, countries within Africa. So like I think Mali, Kenya, probably a, a lot of those areas. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but probably like a dozen to two dozen different types of countries that this is actually native to. You, it's very hard to get your hands on something like this, especially something that has grown to this size. So if you see a stem, I would definitely pick one up because after they get a, a little bit older, this is around the age that it should start to flower. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, any day now, <laughs> it'll flower and I'll have to send a photo um, on my Instagram if it, if it does because it is just an incredible bloom.